Hello everyone, my name is Trudy Anderson. I'm a Spanish teacher for the New Haven Public Schools and welcome to the National Foreign Language Center virtual uh, conference. And today I'd like to share with you a little bit about reconnecting with our communities. And I know that for me during the pandemic with everything that was going on, I sort of pulled back from doing things in the community with my students. And I think now that we have the chance to more safely do things that I know that my students would be really interested in participating more in the community. And that's something that I'm looking to do. So I know these are things that you might have been doing in your with your students before, but just a little reminder that this is usually our students are really interested in connecting with the community using their target language skills. And let's look for ways that we can do that with our students. So for ACTFL, they're part of their world readiness standards. It talks about communities. It's one of the pillars of the world readiness standards. And it talks about how learners engage with the target language and cultures outside of the classroom. And the part that I love about communities is that learners use their skills for enjoyment, enrichment, and advancement. And I think that's the part my middle schoolers, I think, are more interested in, the part about enjoyment and enrichment as they use their target language skills. So when I started off, I thought about, well, who is my community? And for me, the most critical piece starting off is my classroom, what kind of community I can create there. And I think about my school, the city, and the world in general. So in my classroom, I start off every day with a daily routine. And in that daily routine, of course, we do all the requisite, you know, what's the weather, and all the questions that are related to the unit. But one question that I really like is just simply, how are you doing? And I know for my sixth through eighth graders, they usually are pretty honest about how they're doing and telling you what's been going on in their lives. And I think that's a critical part of creating community. So for me, if my student says my mom's in the hospital, then it's my, my turn to say in the next days to follow up on how mom's doing or I have a softball game this weekend and to find out on Monday morning well how did your softball game go did you win did you lose how did you play following up so that they know that I'm interested in their lives and in addition to tell them some things that are going on with my life so that they know that we're creating a relationship a community in our classroom um, we talk sometimes about using scenarios in our classroom and I think when we're creating speaking tasks or writing tasks to create real life scenarios that are based in their community is just really important for them seeing how they can use their target language. So for example, if I'm doing the food unit, well, New Haven is, is known for its food scene and especially the food trucks on Long Wharf to create my scenarios based on them going to places in their community so they could see how they would use it. One thing that I started doing maybe two years now, was using pictures and resources completely from the New Haven community. So when we're talking about places around town and we're learning about a park, I'm using a picture of the park that they go to. If they're talking about places of worship, I'm using the places in the city. So if we're talking about restaurants, I'm using restaurants in the city of New Haven that my students would go to. And that helps them to tune in some more to what I am doing in the classroom. Bringing in guest speakers from our community also builds this classroom connectedness that I think we really need. And making sure that when, we t when we're doing our activities that we're connecting it to the world around us and having the students realize that they're global citizens, they're part of this community in the real world and they can use their target language skills there. For the past two years, I started learning how to use the UN Sustainable Goals in my, my daily lessons and are planning out my units. And just, again, it's a way of my students seeing that the goals that the UN has are goals for students here in New Haven, here in the United States, and here in the world. And to get my students to get start thinking about themselves as being part of the, the world community. My school 
is an extension of my classroom. And I, I've realized over the past few years that I need to be more visible in my school. I'm the only world language teacher there, and I do lots of things in my classroom, but I realized that I needed to take it outside of my classroom. So one of the things that I did this past school year is that the materials that get sent home to school, to parents, oftentimes are only in English. And we have a really large Spanish speaking population in our school. So I asked my students to create a flyer for the food drive in, in November, last November, and sent them home. And we did a little competition for which uh, ones would be picked to send home to the parents. And I was amazed at how much work the students put in into it. We were learning how to tell people to do things. So it was just a really good segue into it. And the students were amazed that the things that they were creating in their own Spanish class were things that were going to be sent home to real life Spanish speaking people, as they said. And they really put in a lot of hard work to make this something that would be comprehensible for themselves, but also helpful to the families that we have. I think every world language teacher needs to think about making sure that they are participating in any kind of school-wide showcase of what's being done in class, because oftentimes people think of the language arts class or social studies classes as the core classes of showcasing what's being done but we're doing quite a bit in our classrooms too and i think we need to make sure we're always present one of the activities that my students worked on this year was a water conservation project during the home and family unit which i'll talk about a little bit later but here my students created flyers and infographics that they put up around the school to encourage people to conserve water and this was something that they were doing in the target language one thing I started doing um, a few years ago, and I saw this on Pinterest, and you can always click through to see that, um, is making a bulletin board about Spanish in the real world. And there's so many ways that for my class that students can interact with Spanish throughout the community for them, community and in New Haven, we've done things that we've shown that how they, all the languages that we teach in New Haven, we've shown ways that they can interact with that language out in their community. And so we put up a bulletin board uh, about, for example, you were making brownies and there was something there on the box that you saw in Spanish. And so I have this thing called Spanish in the real world that you can click on it. And it's just a little paper that says, I found this thing in Spanish and here are the words that I recognize. Here are some words I didn't know, but I was interested. I looked it up and they bring me the artifact and it's something that can be put on the bulletin board. This was something that I found on Pinterest a few years back and the link is there for you if you'd like to click on it. So the city of New Haven is a pretty diverse place for us. And so we're using it as part of our backdrop to our curriculum. And in fact, for the level one community, curriculum that we have here, it's totally based on what's going on in the city. And so one thing my students really enjoy is going to visit different restaurants and getting the chance to order their food in the target language, trying to have a conversation with an employee or with other students during the time that we're there. And that's always fun because students like food. Um, being pen pals with another school. Here I did a Padlet version with another student in another teacher in New Haven Public Schools, and they were able to write back and forth to each other. So we did a Padlet, but you can do simple, you know, writing on paper to each other and sending it off in the mail if that's what's interesting or more convenient for you. But I, I was thinking about next school year, I'm work, going to be working with another teacher to do an urban suburban pen pal program, because I think it's really critical that people get to know each other. And we're always so entrenched in our own community that sometimes we don't really take the time to learn about what's going on in other places. So for me, the urban suburban will be a really fun thing to try out for the next school year. In our city, there are plenty of causes and 
community help networks that need help. And so if that's something that's interesting to you and your students based on the unit that you're working on, then maybe you might want to help fundraise for it or go there and volunteer to help that thing, that organization in the community. Uh, visiting a senior center, speaking with uh, the center, people at the center, the target language would be something that might be interesting to you. And in for us in New Haven, one thing we're, we started trying this year is having the students document the use of the target language in the community and giving them a reward for that. So if you click on where I say document, um, we have this paper that says, hi, I'm a student in New Haven and I'm trying to use the target language. May I speak to you about something? And so that they can bring it to them if they go to the supermarket, if they're in a doctor's office and somebody speaks Spanish, um, if they're in a restaurant, all those different things they could use and they could document it and bring it in. So it's just encouraging them to always be thinking about, can I use my target language skills when I'm around the city? Your world is your community. And so if, you, if you're able, you can encourage your students to travel and, and when they go, to encourage them to use the, the language skills. My one of my students actually went to Disney and when they went to Epcot, they said, well, when you're in Mexico, try to use the language. Um, one thing I would say is just be careful how we portray other people's cultures, because oftentimes students think the thing that we show them, everybody is like that. And I think we just need to be careful that we're helping that not helping them to develop stereotypes, but to think about people's cultures critically, not everybody's poor, not everybody's destitute, cultures differ, differ and learn how to appreciate it. And just to be able to appreciate somebody else's culture, I think it's important for that our kids know. And thinking about if there are causes that we wanna support in other parts of the world, I know UNICEF is geared towards things with children. And if there are issues or causes in UNICEF that your students would think about supporting, then if it's based on a unit that you're studying, then maybe it's something you'd like to consider. So as I said before, I started learning how to incorporate the UN Sustainable Goals in the units that I'm doing. And so this one here, I listed the goals that I used while I was planning the home and family unit. And for our home and family unit, I started off with talking about the daily routines that students have at home. They learn vocabulary, um, how to make informal commands. They're just a lot of different things they learned along with the home and family unit. But I wanted it to be more than just learning chores and talking about your bedroom. And so we talked about chores by gender and why it seems that mothers and females tend to do more and how that's been changing. But my big question for them that we spent more time on was talking about how they use water in their daily life and how would their life be different if they had limited access to water. So we talked about that quite a bit. And I showed them a video on Aisha's water walk. And it shows this young lady who spent six to eight hours a day collecting water for her family. And this video was not in Spanish. In fact, there wasn't much speaking in the video, but I wanted them to see what that was like for some people. And at the end of the, you, uh, the video, it talked about how water is hope, water is education, water is time. And so we talked about, well, what do those things really mean for Aisha? What would that mean for them? They compared their routine to Aisha's. Um, we read infographics about conserving water, and that's when it led to them doing an infographic or a poster describing why it would be good for students in our school and for themselves to conserve water. And so I, I would encourage you to think about how your classes connect to the community, whether it's in the United States, in your local city or in the world. And I thought the UN Sustainable Goals are really good to center me to think about not only my classroom, but outside of the classroom. I think the favorite thing for my students is going on field trips. And, and over during the pandemic, that was something that went by the wayside for many of us in this 
coming up school year, I'm thinking about more ways to safely go do some of the things that my I know my students really love doing. So visiting with your partner school, if you were you decide to do a pen pal program might be really good. Um, going to a restaurant, museums, art galleries, supermarkets that sell ethnic foods and might have people who there who speak uh, the target language might be really good ideas. And I'm sure you have lots more things that you do with your students to get them out of the classroom to go use their target language. This spring, I in New Haven, we did a workshop on how we could use the uh, target language to do community service. And I love this quote that no act of kindness is ever wasted. And so we talked about what were the really good reasons to have our students do community service. I know that many high schools require community service for graduation. However, for the other students, why would they do it? And I think the two things that I connect with the most are that it gives a better perspective on the world and their place in it, and that it connects what you're learning in school to the world. And I think those are really great reasons to, to think about doing community service with your students. Again, it would have to be based on what the units are that you're doing. Now, if I'm going to do community service, of course, I need to get administrative per, uh, approval. It, and I would encourage anyone who's going to make any kind of monetary donations to any organization that you check the charity ratings of the organizations to make sure that most of the money that you're going to be giving to them are would be going towards the, the people itself and not to overhead costs. I would check the age of volunteers because sometimes they usually prefer older students, uh, whether they're COVID restrictions. And I would definitely encourage the students to have input into what projects are chosen, again, based on the units that you're going to do. And to remind your students that, you know, help them to understand that they shouldn't have what I, you know, some people call the savior complex, that they're going to save the world and save everyone while they're doing it. But just that it's part of being a responsible citizen that we help the people that are around us. So some community service opportunities that we've discussed in, in New Haven, first is for me, again, starting in my school community, helping that with the materials gets, that get sent home. So as I said earlier, we did the food drive and we did the gingerbread house competition in, in December. Participate in everything that's going on in your school as a world language team. I talked about the water conservation projects so that students could learn to conserve water here in the building. And here where I say, say plan an activity for younger children in our school, here's where my Spanish two students in their in the childhood unit, we were reading fairy tales for the most part during that unit. And one of my students suggested that we do a play with it. And then I suggested, well, why don't we do the play, but then we present it to the kindergarten. And since then, except for the two years with the pandemic, um, we've they've written the, the script for the play, planned the props, did everything together, made the invitation for the younger students, and then they've performed for the younger students. Now that we're loosening up some of the COVID requirements and restrictions, next school year, I'm going to be doing that again with, with our students because they've always enjoyed doing that. And another thing is reading target language books to younger students. Many of them are picture books, so the students can understand by watching the pictures, looking at the pictures, and the older students get practice interacting with other people. In our community, New Haven is my community, lots of food pantries or ways to help food insecurity with food insecurity in our city and so you might want to figure out what a food pantry would like and collect the the food the types of food they would want and students could make the posters and ads in the target language to send home to parents and put up in your school to help get people to donate and i would suggest donating even at some time that's not around the holidays because People need food all throughout the year, and most people usually think about it only during the holidays. Again, in New Haven, there are several shelters that people need to go in while there might 
be without a home. And so I would check with the shelters to see what it is that they need. Socks are always a high, a high need item. And so maybe you could host a sock drive or a toothbrush and toothpaste drive when you're doing the daily routine unit or the home and family unit. And you could invite your entire school to participate. And this, again, the students make the posters that I'd put it around the school or send them home to encourage people to, to, to participate. And I would even go as far as having our students write a, a note in the target language and maybe on one side put it in English and send a note with the things that you're donating as a way of encouraging the people who come through the shelters or include a book or a small toy, those kinds of things to encourage people as they go through a difficult time. The seniors, I think, are a group that we are not using as much as we could. And a visit to some of these uh, senior centers, I think, would be a welcome change for the seniors and really good for our students. So one teacher in New Haven who encouraged me to start doing this, unfortunately, our trip had to can get canceled because it was two weeks after the pandemic started. But she plans a breakfast for the seniors at one particular senior center. And they do things like read with a senior, play games with a senior. So for example, I taught my students how to play dominoes because many of the people who were at this senior center happened to be of Puerto Rican heritage. And that's a popular game there. So I taught them how to play dominoes so they could play with a senior. And their job was to go, was to go interview the senior and compare their childhood experiences with the seniors' childhood experiences. Since we were unable to do that the past two years, I've invited uh, a senior in virtually to speak with my students on the topic of comparing childhoods. And uh, one teacher suggested doing a paranda, which is going to the senior center if they're not being allowed in and just singing outside, bringing cards written in the target language for them so that they could, the students could get to use the target language and uh, sending cards or letters and writing in your target language. If you're able to do that, that would be a really good way of connecting your students to the senior community. If your students are working on an animal unit, for example, you could see what the animal shelter would like and maybe do a drive for the things that they would like dog toys, dog food, you know, animal food, and then bring that in for, for your, for the shelters. So it really does depend on what you're studying that you can choose to tailor what your community service would be. International, there are many international organizations. I know Heifer does a lot with him, things, a lot of things with schools. And so if you click on international, there are some ideas of places that students might want to tap into and do work with. But again, I would suggest that you check the charity ratings for everyone before you make any donation to them. So I know these are things that you've heard before, things that you've done before, but I know for many of us, because of the pandemic, we've pulled back. And I, I completely understand that because I know I've done that also. But we, I would encourage us to think about ways that we can start reconnecting our students to the community, whether we're just starting with our own classrooms or we're ready to take it outside into our towns and into our cities. But I would encourage us to think about how we can tap into the community standard to have our students have enjoyment and enrichment in learning the target language. So thank you for joining me. My contact information is on the first slide and thank you for the National Foreign Language Center for having me. And I hope that you have a really good summer. Thank you.